Hey everyone, Catch em All Collectibles here. In today's video, we are going to do something I, I didn't really expect I'd ever do on this channel, but uh, it is Catch em All Collectibles. It's not Catch em All Pokemon, it's not Catch em All Trading Cards, only I'm going to talk about my Utica Club Steins. I'm, I'm going to talk about, I've talked about them a little bit here and there, but they're going to get their own video. Shelton Dooley, up above my shoulder. We, we've got all the minis right here. We'll talk about this creepy guy in a, a little bit later. This might be a long one. I don't know how long it's going to go, but if you thought the MetaZoo dead CCG videos were dark, th th this one might get really dark, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. For anyone who's unfamiliar with, with my history, I was doing Pokemon the last 10 years. I've been doing Pokemon the past 10 years. 2014, I got back in full-time now. Full-time 2021, I went full-time going on three years this year. And uh, before I was catching all collectibles, I actually used to have an eBay username that had Steins right in it. That's how big I've been on eBay for 20 years. I My original way back when was like uh, my old AIM username, I think it was. I've probably gone through five different, in those 20 years, I've probably gone through like five different eBay handles. And the early ones made no sense, had nothing to do with anything. They were like my AIM username. <laughs> and then I had Steins in it. And now I'm catching all collectibles. I think I'll stick with catching all collectibles. I went fairly broad in case I go back into Steins, video games, coins, whatever it may be. Uh, obviously, the catch them fits in with, with Pokemon. But uh, anyways, this video is going to be talking about my recent last Saturday. So this is one week ago. I went to a Stein convention and I'm closing a chapter in catch them all collectibles history. I am going to be done. I'm going to be done with selling not done with buying. I'm going to talk about my collection, my PC. I'm going to be done, though, with selling at conventions, buying with intent to resell anything in the Stein world. Main reasons there, just to be really quick, Pokemon cards, high prices, high liquidity, very compact, very low volume, very low fragility. Uh, don't tell that to this Mario Pikachu, because he may have gotten cracked when my daughter pulled him off the table. That was stupid of me leaving it on the table. But imagine how these steins would fare. Imagine how these steins would fare if they were pulled off a table. Many of steins have been knocked off shelves. High attrition rate when the cable man try, tries running the cable. When uh, when a shelf that's improperly installed just falls. But anyways, I'm, I'm going to start talking about the convention. This might be the only Utica Club Shelts and Dooley video that I make on my channel ever. So we might just go half an hour. We might go an hour. Who knows? I'm going to talk about the convention, how it went. Same way I recap the, the Collecticon conventions over the weekends that I, I do that for Pokemon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that, though it was just a day. Uh, but yeah, let, let me start with a little bit of a slideshow. This was how my morning started. And, and those folks start early. Uh, we start at 8 a.m. We start at 8 a.m. usually after a very late night of having, ha hanging out, having fun, closing a bar down. But I got a decent night's sleep. I had set my alarm for a little after 6 because I believe... We had uh, early bird, early bird access. So VIP for Collecticon is like an hour after dealer setup. A lot of dealers do deals between each other. So a lot of the best deals are probably done at, even at Collecticon within the dealer hour. Years ago, th that used to be kind of a complaint at these conventions. And what they did was they actually started early bird. So consumers could come in 10 bucks, 10 bucks to vent, 10 bucks to get a table, 10 bucks to be an early bird. So it's like, if you're going there to buy stuff and you buy, sell, trade this stuff anyways, you might as well be a vendor, get a table, have a place to set up, and then um, it, it's the same cost as the early bird entry. And then if you're not there in that first hour, if you want to come in at 8 a.m., I think it went from 7 a.m. early bird till 1 p.m., it's free. It's free from 8 p.m. to 1 p.m. So that tells you a little bit about uh, how, how it's set up, how it goes. This was the actual location. As you can see, the weather was not too kind to me. Thankfully, the plows had been down the side of the road that I was going on. This was me stopping at Duncan, stopping uh, at, at a gas station that had a Duncan there. This was me at the actual event, the actual venue, the Utica Manicor. If anyone's local to Central New York, if they know what that is, pretty cool old building. Uh, th this was my setup. Th this was my table. Originally, I, I was only going to do one steep price to upgrade. Uh, the, the place was not sold out. I will show a whole picture of the entire venue, but um, I was there about 7.20. No, no one was there. There were a couple people there like uh, fully set up by the time I got there. Over to my left, you'll actually see in the next picture, there were a couple people with like three tables, full, full get up, full set up. Uh, I was going to do one. I realized I had way too much stuff. I, I ended up scooting this guy over one because that was going to be an empty table. So I had two tables and then uh, I think there was a like 
five or six tables in this row, maybe five. We'll, we'll probably see in the next one. But this is me unpacked in a little bit. I'll show you. Uh, why am I on this one again? Uh, th this is the one that I was supposed to go to. <laughs> so this this was the whole event. O over here, they actually had like, uh, if you had stuff you didn't want anymore, and, and they had like a, a raffle, ba basically to raise money. So part of all this, I'm in a club. I'm in a club that meets like once a month. We're called the Officer Suds Club. That is this guy right here. We'll do a little bit of a history lesson after talking about the convention on the um, the Steins and the characters. We won't get too, too deep. But I, I could go on for hours and hours, especially if I had a couple of these guys here with me to talk about it. But yeah, uh, down this wing, maybe six tables down this way, maybe six across the back, six down this side, five or six here, five or six here. There was probably 25 tables total. This was taken probably late in the early bird like vendor setup window it never got like shoulder to shoulder in here if you could imagine it didn't get completely crazy but yeah i was uh i was right here I, I was i was not the first row against the wall but i was the second row right here this was me uh behind me there was a bar they had beers they had utica club naturally they had chili dogs i did partake in a chili dog so I, I did not have a section. I, I did not buy chili dogs for the whole section or anything. That's just a, a collecticon thing, I guess. But yeah, a lot of beer cans, a lot of big old uh, advertising signs. I had a lot of steins. I had trays. We'll see my setup very soon. The the back wall, as, as you can see, uh, well, maybe you can't really see, <laughs> as I can see a little bit better than you, but still not great. Some nice big like old old signs, vintage signs. Talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but th this is what I brought. I actually posted this to Instagram. I, I guess you can't quite see everything. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a little slide. Oh no, I'm moving my I'm moving I'm moving my overlay. Let me lock that so I can't move that. So yeah, over here we we've got like coffee mugs. I'm not a coffee drinker. A lot of these coffee mugs were like throw-ins when I was buying Stein collections years ago. Uh, biggest Stein collection I ever bought, probably like 80 to 100 Steins. At my peak, I probably had about 400, 300 to 400 steins at one time. Uh, crazy, a absolutely crazy amount. You can only fit a, a couple dozen of them if you pack them really tight, dangerously tight. This stuff is very fragile, ceramic steins. But yeah, some random German ones here, nothing to do with Schultz and Dooley. They're just ones that were kind of throw-ins with collections that I bought. But yeah, I, I had a decent little selection of steins. I had a bunch of mugs that I did not want anymore. This was all extra. So this was all extra stuff. This was stuff that was not fitting in my PC. Trays, all these trays were extra. I'm, I'm a big fan of the beer trays. A lot of my um, my garage is adorned, my, my little garage man cave. I don't have my kegerator fully set up yet. At some point I wanna kinda get like more of a bar set up in my garage, but uh, my former house I did have a better setup, but my new one's a lot bigger. It's just not not done yet. But I, I have all these beer trays are duplicated. I have, I have several more in my collection. Pretty much every beer tray that I think Utica Club came out with. This is like a reproduction of a very early one. This one would be quite expensive if I were to get the original in the several hundred dollar range. But I think I had 40 bucks on this and I think I eventually took like 25 or 30 to get that one sold. Uh, I will, I, I guess I should talk about the prices and the sales um, right now because this is all I went home with. So of everything that you saw there, this is all that I went home with. Not too many things. Um, I was doing five bucks a coffee mug and three for 10. So again, we, we talked about like the, um, the value density, very low value density on this kind of stuff. So all the mugs went. I, I had one guy, a uh, couple, couple like um, end consumers, I'll say. So one thing that happens at Pokemon conventions a lot, I'll, I'll do my analogy as best I can here throughout. A lot of times people will say like, oh, well, how are your sales? Were they all buyouts? Were they all your clouds? You're, you're going twice as were they all, uh, were they all vendor to vendor buyouts or were they like to consumer? So most my mugs, I want to say all my mugs, actually, I, I think I had a few people. Oh, I need that one. I need that one paying five bucks, five bucks, three for 10. And then it got down to where maybe I had 10 left and they counted them up and they're like, I forget what the number even came to. I mean, if it was 10 of them, if they're three for 10, 25 or 30 bucks, and they're like, yep, take them all, take them all. So that, that was an end consumer. He actually, he couldn't remember which ones he needed, but he knew he needed at least several of the remaining ones I had. So he's like, I'm just going to buy them all. And then I'll, whether he'll throw them away, whether he'll give them as a gift, whatever it was. So it was kind of funny because it's like, they're so cheap that 
I'll just accidentally get a duplicate if I need to, r rather than like not get one and then realize I needed it and be bummed about that. The Steins, I, I think I had, oh, I had 50 on Moon Man. Moon Man did eventually sell for the full 50. Uh, 40 a piece on the other ones. I had 40 a piece, three for 100, and all of them sold, but the, the giant Wanda Waitress, the Countess, uh, Officer Suds, and then there's a German one right there. There are a couple more wrapped up. I, I believe Farmer McGee, and then I forget Cousin Emma. Com Cousin Emma also didn't sell. One thing about these, I, I actually so behind me, I, I showed a minute ago. Behind me though are these mini steins. We, we, we might talk about the characters a little bit more later, but the mini steins are great because they're mini. They're tiny. Uh, still not the value density of Pokemon, but I, I actually might get these up there somewhere. I, I might move the two big ones and just put all the little ones. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I, I do want to forever have somewhere in my background. M maybe I can't justify the big ones. Maybe I'll have to put the small shorts and Dooley. But uh, anyways, my PC, what I'm whittling my PC down into is... So over the years, since 1959, 1959... They released the original, and these are not the originals, these are Bra Brazil reproductions from like the 80s. They released the original Schultz and Dooley mugs, signs, and that was in 1959. So we're going on, what, what are we at? 65 years, 65 years we're at. Um, and then they had a series of commercials. I, I do have a tab open for this to show you later. I, I guess I showed all the... Um, I, I can talk about the price of the second photo before I close out on this, I guess. So, so let me talk about the prices on this. I had what, what I called flats here. I, I guess I had like old advertising, things like that. Most of these sold. I, I had 10 on one pile and I had five each on one pile. And uh, that all sold. There was one guy that came and it's like maybe it totaled to 100 bucks and he took them for like 80. After a couple people had picked out things. VHSs down here in the bottom corner. Two bucks a piece. I took a buyout at the end. Basically, I got down to where I had all my trays were gone. I had the openers over here that I had a dollar a piece. All the trays went to um, one individual who actually has, a, I guess, streamer equivalent. Think like cloud. Instead of streaming on, on whatnot or TikTok or TikTok or eBay Live, he actually has. Um, there, there are a lot of antique like vendor malls near me. Think like Frankensons, but uh, antiques. Think think Frankensons for antiques. I don't think it only runs though on weekends. A lot of these places are open like five five to seven days a week and you set up a booth kind of like Java Akuma has. Ba basically, there's there are employees of the facility and there might be anywhere between 30 vendors, 30 vendor booths and 100 vendor booths. And what you do is you put a price tag and you put your booth number on every item. Tons of cameras everywhere. Some amount of theft probably still happens at a place like this. But you would have a table, you, you would have a booth, you would have an area. And you would pay a commission. Maybe you'd pay 50 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month for the area. And then you'd pay like 5 or 10% of your sale price. So uh, the person who bought all my trays, they actually, they, they talked me down maybe to 60% of what I had them listed at. They were going to list them for basically the same price I had them listed, maybe slightly higher. They're like, yeah, your prices are good. Your prices are fair. But I, I just can't make enough margin to justify it. So I came down. He bought like eight trays and it ended up being like whatever it was, uh, 100, 100 bucks or something. So he, he he made money. I got rid of a bunch of them. I think the only two that I didn't sell him were the Cream Ale one and this one, which which at the end got sold in, in the bigger buyout. So yeah, these two survived to the end. All the VHS and the record. This record actually has their old commercials on it. The, um, the VHSs have their old commercials on it. And the openers, the openers all went. Um, oops, yeah. This is this is where I was trying to go. Um, total sales. I, I guess I forgot to cover. Total sales for the day. Um, almost everything sold. Ev everything but what I showed in here. And ultimately, I, I grossed. I mean, not net. I don't know what my cost base on, was on any of this stuff. Pro probably losing money. On, a, on some of it, but like in a situation where I flipped all my money out of this stuff, like I, I don't have net, have any money into Utica Club, Schultz and Dooley. It's all profit. I, I've profited some small amount of money, but I've mostly profited items over the years. And then this was all leftover. So it was like all, all profit, but obviously you, you'd have to be fair, uh, account some kind of a cost basis in here. But anyways, I did 900, 900 in total sales for the day. The total value of what I brought home 
would have been maybe a hundred, 200 bucks, like 200 bucks tops at the high end. So I guess I had about 80, 80 to 90% total sell through of like what I brought, like gross 900 out of the 1100 that I brought. So, so 80% like sell through rate on what I brought. So I think that's going to bring me to the end. Let me go back. Let me go back here and close all this out. I think we should be, yeah, we should be good. So as I was talking about earlier, um, my PC. So if you search Schultz Schultz and Dooley Steins on like YouTube, you can actually find the original like 1962 Schultz and Dooley beer commercial where where they're spacemen. I'm not going to play it. I don't know if the audio would get me into trouble. Probably not for a 60 something year old commercial, but funny little skits where the beer steins are the characters and, and someone's like talking with them, singing with them, doing crazy things. Uh, my PC though, what I intend to be like my PC moving forward, I only really want all the ones that were originally in the commercials. And, and there might be like 20 of them. There might be 20 of them or so. I can justify having a cabinet where I have 20 different steins and I'll actually show you. Um, some of the steins that I'm not that interested in, and it's crazy. So I searched Schultz and Dooley, high to low, $650 for a mummy stein. So what, this is where we're going to get into the vintage versus modern. So vintage versus modern in Pokemon, uh, wait till you see my Monday video. My, my Monday video is going to be fun. Uh, stay tuned for that, the, the Pokemon video. But here are the original, here are the original Schultz and Dooley from 1959. As far as I remember, 1,500 sets were made in 1959. Imagine how many were destroyed. I mean, 65 years. Imagine how many were lost to time. Imagine how many. I don't even know how many. Like, maybe half. I would be shocked if half survived. Say there's 750 sets left. But the thing is, um, and these were made in Germany. I mean, Steins, I'm not a huge Stein guy. Not at all outside of Utica Club, Schultz and Dooley. But, um, so I guess I am a Stein guy because I do Schultz and Dooley ones. The two big like world centers for Steins are, if you know anything about Steins, uh, Brazil and Germany. And in the 50s through, I want to say the early 80s, they had everything made in Germany. In the 80s to the 90s, they had everything made in Brazil. In the 2000s, it's a lot less popular overall. I mean, if you want to talk about like, like Metazoo's a dead CCG, this is a very dying hobby. Uh, as sad as it is to say, and I've talked about it before in some different live streams and stuff, but, um, like the average age of, of an attendee of a vendor for that event, if you take me out, the average age was probably 75. If you add me in, it was probably, I mean, I, I guess there was dozens and dozens of people. So it probably only lowered it to like 74 or something, but, um, uh, there are not like. 15 year olds getting into this. I mean, 15 year olds probably shouldn't get into it given, given that it's a uh, alcohol paraphernalia, I guess you'd call it. So yeah, it, uh, it's, it's just like literally dying out. A lot of the collectors are passing on and, and no one's there to fill their, fill their space. All these collections are coming up. A lot of these steins, a lot of those steins that I, I'm selling for $40 and, uh, a lot of these steins that you'll see on here, selling for, for 30 to 50, 60 bucks shipped and, and think about shipping a Stein and then the eBay fees and all that. Uh, that's why it was attractive to just sell for 40 cash. But years back, back when I was doing this in, in the 2011 to 2016 year time frame, um, these things were selling for like a hundred. A lot of these were selling for a hundred and they're down 60% now. I talked to people in my club. I talked to people at that event some of the ones like like the cousin Emma that, that sell them for forty. All these things that that are selling for forty, fifty, sixty bucks. The Moon Man sell for fifty. Some of those steins in, in the early two thousands, like pre think pre two thousand eight. Uh, a lot more collectors were around. Obviously, the people that were eighty now, that are eighty now, were sixty then. The, the people, I mean, th there were more people then. I, I think a lot of crazy things were going on. Maybe even the, around the time of like the Beanie Babies. Around the time of Beanie Babies, pre two thousand eight. 2000 to 2008, maybe 1999 to 2008. Some of these steins were selling at the brewery center. Uh, so, so MSRP for a lot of these back then in the 80s, 90s was like 50, I think. Now, now the big ones are 90, and the small ones are 50. But uh, it's crazy because um, the cousin Emma and, and the Max Millennium and some of these steins that they weren't even in the commercials. They they weren't even the original ones, but they were uh, only only a thousand produced, only 1200 produced. 
they were selling for several hundred dollars, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and people were falling over each other to get them. Kind of like how this mummy is. Kind of like how some of these other ones that I'll show you are. Um, it's pretty wild, but today they're worth almost nothing. The print run, the production run on a lot of those early steins, fifteen hundred for the original Schultz and Dooley. But a lot of the um, a lot of the other characters that were in the commercials, a lot of the popular characters from the the that were being done in the eighties and nineties, thousands, many thousands, five, six, seven thousand. I want to say I don't remember the exact numbers. There's actually a couple of books out. Uh, what, the the former president of the club that I'm in, one of the guys who vended at the show past Saturday, he he actually wrote a book where he tracked. I don't know if people are still tracking uh, the the relationship between the brewery club and the actual brewery itself is kind of broken down, and a, a lot of the people are like more vintage guys. I'm more of a vintage guy in Steins. And I don't have interest in this mass produced stuff out of China, but clearly the market does because what's happening is it's not as popular. These things go for 50 to 90 bucks, small email list. They're terrible at even uh, advertising when a Stein is going to be, be released. And then they make like anywhere between 200 and 500. I mean, some of these that might only be two, three, 400. So years later, there's a lot of people somehow, I, I don't know how, because there's over 100 steins now. Just like we're at 100 sets in Pokemon, 100 plus sets in Pokemon. There are over 100 steins. I don't have a, I have a big house. I don't have a house big enough to, to display all those. That's a whole wall in a huge room. I mean, 100 steins. I've got cats. I've got a dog. I've got two kids. I can't have steins on display like that. <laughs> So I just have no interest. I, I have interest in, in my man cave, in my bar, having maybe 20 or so of the original ones, the ones that, not that I'm nostalgic for a commercial from the 1960s, but those are the ones that interest me personally. And it's great be, because uh, no investing, no intent for resell anymore. I, I used to buy in bulk, buy a bunch of them and then have fun going to the shows and setting up. I did a little bit on eBay with these. I mean, I, I did put Steins in my name on eBay. But never, never too crazy of an amount. I want to say they made fifteen hundred of the fiftieth anniversary Stein. This is a massive Stein that's still going for four hundred fifty bucks. Back when I was doing it, seven eight hundred bucks. I want to say uh, the bride and groom. They, they didn't make too many of those. Maybe only two hundred fifty or three hundred sets. I actually have. It, it is nice to see some of these earlier ones. Um, uh, uh, the the earlier advertising pieces. I, I I didn't prepare by taking a picture. My my, my garage is is not well kept right now it, it, it maybe maybe there will be another video like once i get my man cave fully done maybe five years from now maybe i'll do a man cave tour but um this will have to suffice i do have these these uh sconces i think they call them these uh, old advertising lights Th those are the kinds of things that interest me the trays the old advertising this is one of those ones it's like snowmobiling I used to snowmobile i i enjoyed snowmobiling i just don't really care to have a massive snowmobile stein some of the most valuable steins today, you don't even see sales for them, but they, they made four snowmobiles, a green, a yellow, a red, and a blue. Red and blue, I, I think most people w would deem more popular colors than green and yellow, and the red and blue ones were made less too. I, I want to say blue was like 250 red was 300 yellow and green were closer to 500 each. They go for over $1,000. They go for over $1,000, the blue and red snowmobiles, and I've owned them before. I, I used to buy them for 250 to 300 I used to sell them for five to 600 and they've gone up a lot since then. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I never got into the skull. I never got into the bear. These ones were coming out uh, j just a handful of years ago, probably four or five years ago. I was there. I didn't have any interest. I wasn't buying them. These were selling for 50 bucks and they're going for several, several times as much. Where do I think they'll be in 20 years? I think they'll be where the, um, the ones behind me are. These are just the minis, but like the big versions, the ones I took home that I couldn't sell for 40 bucks a piece. I think that's the situation they'll be in. I could be wrong. I, I could be entirely wrong. Th this is the one that I wanted to show. So this creepy dude behind me, you, you may think like, what, what is Dan doing with that creepy dude? What, what is that thing? Get it away. This is the kind of thing that I like. Th this creepy dude. This thing is from like the 40s. It's called chalkware. I mean, you can look up what chalkware is. It's made from like plaster of Paris or, or something like that. Uh, very, very old. This would have been like in a bar. This would have been... Uh, like a bar that carried Utica Club beer. Maybe if you ordered so many kegs in a year, the brewery would just give you one of these to, to put on your bar back, to put a lot of history, a pretty cool thing. I don't know what bars this one was in. I, I don't know where it was, but to think that it's like 80 years old and it's such a fragile thing. And I can't tell if it had a full break and it got glued, 
but there is a crack that pretty much goes all the way through. Pretty fragile. Uh, there's another variation of this where the guy's just a, a pretty short guy, but he's actually wearing like he, he's an actual he's wearing pants. Like he doesn't have a bo he doesn't have a body here. He just has a UC. Uh, but there's one where he's wearing pants. I want to say I paid. 300 for that and this is like a new stein from three or four years ago oh make, let me let me make sure i get it back this is like a reproduction of that made in china i, I can't say mass produced but it, it's more like artificial scarcity if you watch reserved investments he talks a ton about artificial scarcity they slightly underproduce demand so if they think that maybe like 500 people out there in the world will want it they make like 300 they make like 400 they're actually very smart they're doing a good thing because they sell out in full. If they made 5,000 of each of these, it all be worth 20 bucks now. But they only make 300 or 400 so that they won't be worth 20 bucks until 20 or 30 years from now. It's very, very wise. They are extracting a lot of money. Uh, Schultz and Dooley wearing like holiday sweaters, the mummy, Uncle Sam one. I've owned that before. Uh, the pumpkin. The pumpkin. I actually have a note. It's funny. I, I uh, years ago, I had one. I think they only made two or three hundred first edition ones. Some people are very big on first edition. Some people are big on like, I don't want the second edition. I don't want the unlimited edition where they don't even label on the bottom. I had a non first edition pumpkin stein. I knew if I'd had a first edition one, I would have priced it in the several hundred dollar range. This is a non first edition one. I had a non first edition one. A guy asked me, so, uh, what are you asking on the pumpkin? I hadn't even priced it yet. I hadn't even put it out. I'm like, oh, I was going to put it with these other ones. For 40 bucks a piece i was just gonna put it there and uh he's like don't tell me that he's like don't do that to me don't tell me that you will see one here sold for 175 as well but uh i i said i'd do 40 on it and he gave me 150 bucks he's like let me tell you what great great honest guy i've, I've actually he, he's like one of the bigger resellers one of the bigger resellers of utica club steins over the past few years but kind of when I, I kind of got out of it when I started having kids, my son's five. So I had met him before at a previous convention, probably four or five years ago, because that's the last one I went to. I haven't kept up in, in, in the modern market uh, and vintage has gone down and modern has gone up. That, that's all it's been. So in my mind, at the time that I exited five years ago, the non first edition pumpkin, it was a $50 stein tops. And I figured it drifted slightly down. I don't even know what first edition ones would do. I, I don't have one anymore, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, apparently the holiday, like like the Halloween ones, the Christmas ones, just go nuts. And yeah, he, um, I was surprised he gave me one fifty. He'll probably be able to resell it for two fifty through his connections, through whatever. I, I guess he sells a bunch on Facebook locally to me. Uh, I don't do much on Facebook, a little bit for like Pokemon groups. But I guess I'll have to join some uh, Utica Club, Schultz and Dooley groups because there are a couple like Grails that I want out there. There there are a couple of PC pickups that I still need to make in the future. But anyways, uh, I offered to sell it to him for th for forty. And he gave me 150. Later on, there there was another um, modern. I, I had tons of like 50 year old bottle openers for a buck a piece. There was a modern one, uh, a holiday Nutcracker Stein, and it was the matching um, the matching bottle opener that went with it. I asked him for a buck, like I was all my other ones. To me, that was the worst one in there. I didn't care about it. He gave me five bucks. He's probably gonna resell it for 10 or 20. I, I don't even know. I don't even care. But I just wanted to share that great great guy, great interaction. He could have had a stein for 40 bucks. Could have, I would have been none the wiser. He vended right across from me. He actually had a pumpkin out. I didn't see what price he had on it, but he was probably a little worried like I was going to come over and, oh man, you paid me 40 for that and you're asking 400 or 250, whatever it would have been. I don't know. But that, that was a funny interaction that I wanted to share. I've never had that happen at Pokemon. I, I think I know Pokemon well enough that I never mispriced anything that badly, but it was just a funny interaction. Scrolling through a lot of these other ones, like j just the newer, all, all these ones up here, all these ones I've scrolled by. Like, like, here's the Utica Club. They call him Uncle Charlie, th this dude. It's like a zombie Uncle Charlie. Like, I don't care about that. I, 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 Not that I have a nostalgic connection to the commercials or anything, but the history. The history is cool. Um, I've actually toured the brewery before. If you tour the brewery, they have all the old stuff. They have all the old advertising. They, I mean, this brewery's been around since late 1800s or something. It was actually the first beer sold after Prohibition. Apparently, somebody at the... It's called the FX Matt Brewery, the Utica Club Brewery. Apparently someone had an in with um someone had an in with like someone in the government and they knew prohibition was going to be repealed because uh, one big thing for Utica Club like all their advertising all their old uh old commercials and stuff natural bubbles a, a lot of a lot of your beers today have just carbonation like injected into them 
whereas Utica Club uh, naturally ferments over like weeks. So it's a multi-week process. And even though it's a multi-week process to create Utica Club, the night prohibition was repealed. Utica Club was, was, I mean, it had beer out there available for sale. So clearly you knew they, they knew something was in the works and they had something going on there. Um, but anyways, uh, you have to scroll way down. You have to scroll way, way down. We're still over $100 here. But to get to the ones that I even care about, it's like they hardly even sell on here because uh, everyone's got them and, and no one wants them. You gotta scroll way, way down. You see some of the officer studs selling for like 80, but but the the sell through rate on these, like how how infrequently these sell re relative to the new ones, it's just pretty crazy. Uh, on this Schultz Dooley, I, I literally just searched Schultz Dooley, only 420 sales. Here's uh, here's the the active. So here's a yellow snowmobile auction, currently at 716. That's probably a legitimate bid that probably will be paid. Scuba diving, Schultz and Dilly, like, I, I just don't care. There's a dog. I mean, I do like dogs, but 350 bucks for a forest, the puppy? No, no, don't care. Uh, here's Utica Club. So this isn't Schultz and Dilly. This, I thought this search was going to pull in more signs. I thought this was going to pull in more like, like, here's some advertising. Here's some tap knobs. Here's some trays. A lot of this stuff is just listed so high, like, relative to what it would actually sell for. Um, I used to have a neon sign that had a crazy buzz to it. It was so fragile. I was afraid I was going to break it. I just got rid of it. Cause I was, I was afraid to plug it in. Cause I thought it was going to burn my house down too. But, uh, that's actually one piece. Where was it? I thought I just saw, I'll show it in a minute. I think I have a tab pulled up, but, but again, here are the sales. Here are the sales for Utica club. A lot of the same ones that when you search Schultz and Dooley, Utica club are coming up too. Like, like this helicopter with Schultz and Dooley in it. A modern thing so here's an old I actually have this sign whether this actually sold for 500 I mean I would love the thought that it did because I mean I mean I have one a lot of these things are from the 60s 70s I kind of got doubt it sold for that high but you can imagine that like shipping something so fragile I mean I wouldn't want to sell it for less than a few hundred bucks because shipping alone could be a hundred bucks depending on how well you double box it and, and pattern and all that but uh again here's those like uh sconces I think they're called Rolling down the steins I don't care about, the pumpkin that I uh, way undersold. I have this. So th this is the girl water skiing. Maybe that's a more valuable one. The whole waifu thing's probably a thing in, in Bruriana as well. But there are like, I have, I have two or three of these mug lights. I think there's like 35 different inserts. Some of the inserts alone sell for like a couple hundred dollars each. This is one of the rarer inserts, I think. Uh, I, I probably only have five or six of the different like background scenery. I would like to get more of them. Not, not that I'm a completionist, not that I need all of them. I'm not like multi thousand dollars to get, a, well, if you want to have the working mug light for every single one too, to, to be able to display all 30 or 25 or however many there are at once, it would be many, many thousands of dollars. But like I, I have a couple of these and I have maybe five inserts. And I think there's a couple different inserts that I'd like to get. I'm probably not gonna spend hundreds on an insert, but if I find a cool one that I can spend 25 to 50 bucks and I can get like a cooler thing that I can kind of swap out in my man cave, I'm all for that. Um, let me go back to the search results, see what else is there. I, I do have a couple old like wooden trays that they would have uh, moved around cases of uh, the glass bottles and stuff in. Uh, the, the pig, the Uncle Sam, the Frankenstein, it's like, <laughs> That, that's where the liquidity is. That's where the market is. So some of these old tap knobs, I, I do believe I have most of the different tap knobs. I definitely have these two. High, high, uh, low 200s, high 100s, somewhere in that vicinity. So there's some value. There, there's some value in the vintage stuff, but uh, how many people will be around collecting it in 20 years? I feel like a lot of this stuff I'll just be able to buy, even though it's hard to um hard to find this stuff. Like, like 20 years from now, is anyone going to be left selling it on eBay? Is anyone going to be left like running these clubs and, and putting these uh, conventions together. Like I will attend the conventions. I'm not gonna vend anymore, but I intend to uh, att attend more in the future. But will people actually put them together? Will, will the conventions actually run? I genuinely have no idea. I mean, I, I love the thought that they will, but I genuinely have no idea. Here's another chalkware piece that I actually do have. Uh, so this bartender dude, just the bartender dude, holds a beer on each side. Cool, cool little thing. I I've had several different ones. I don't know how many were made, probably thousands. Again, this is another thing that they would have given. Uh, looks like this guy's nose. Yeah, a lot of the noses will chip off. Mine's in pretty good shape, though. I probably had like several of them. I kept the best one for the, the PC over the years. Flipped a lot of the lesser ones. Um, 
but yeah, th this is my, uh, I, I hadn't seen this one before. I love this sign. I, I actually have this sign. It, uh, it's got like chains that link all the way down 170 bucks. Like I, I probably bought these. So when I said vintage is going down, modern is going up. I probably bought this sign eight or 10 years ago. So not, not that it's amazing returns for eight or 10 years. Well, I, I guess it's, I guess it is pretty good. Maybe not Pokemon returns, but I probably paid 40 bucks. I probably paid 40 bucks. Mine, mine is probably in better shape because it looks like all the screws pulled out. Not all my screws pulled out, only some of them. I do need to do a little bit of a repair work, which whether that hurts the price or helps, but this would have been in the store. This would have been in the store advertising. Here's how much our 12 pack of cans are. Here's how much the glass cans are, which is an interest, interesting way to call a bottle, right? Glass cans. Um, quartz. Maybe that shows you like how old this stuff is. 60s, 70s. I don't know exactly. Maybe it shows a date on it somewhere. But uh, yeah, to me, just cool. It's cool to think like, hey, what store local to me? Like, well, maybe it's not around anymore. But what store was this hanging up in? How many other people's collection has this been in? I'm a big coin guy. Thinking of the history. Thinking of like, where has this coin been? What does it have? What does it have? What has it been spent on over the years? Just uh, interesting thoughts to me, at least. Uh, let's see. Surprising to see this. I've had multiple of these. It's just a little sign that clamps onto like a uh, a bar. Or th this is something about a register. So I, I guess this clamps to a register, like a cash register, an old school cash register. 150 bucks. I, I mean, I probably paid 20 for mine or something. So so vintage steins are doing very poorly. But apparently, like the the breweriana, the the, the top knobs, foam scrapers, and, and the beer trays, and the chalkware and things like that are doing fairly well uh interesting to see like i, I am looking through this i i browsed through it very briefly before i went and i vended clearly i missed the pumpkin sales but uh I, i've not looked through many much of this i've not looked through too much of this so i'm seeing a lot of this for the first time same as you that right there 68 with 75 shipping i i think i have the same exact wooden crate um i don't know how many different styles they made but i definitely have that one so 150 bucks for that like that's cool to see um I have had that, but I don't think I have that anymore. It's actually a, uh, it's like a bell. If the, if the bartender's too slow getting you a beer, you ring that bell. Um, yeah, there's just the top part of that one sign. So I, I had some snow globes before I actually sold. Before the, the truck I've owned before, I sold those. Just don't really care about any of that stuff. Um, what else do I have to show? I think that's everything I had pulled up. Um, yeah, that's everything I had pulled up. Let me go back full screen for a second. I'm actually going to pause and I'll be right back. So I paused very quickly. I, I did pick up one PC item. It was 20 bucks from a buddy. Probably could have talked him down, but it's like, ah, eh, what's, uh, what's five or 10 bucks amongst friends? I'm not going to try to talk him down. So I went to school out in Troy, New York. Brown's Brewery is out in Troy, New York. And I used to do trivia there. I used to do trivia there. So putting this up in the man cave, very, very thin, very light, very easy to put on a wall in my two and a half stall garage. So uh, yeah, that, that was a little PC item. I, I am a true collector, truest of the true collectors in this Stein stuff. So I wanted to share that. I did have one PC pickup for the, the weekend. Um, well, f for the day, for the morning. It, it was it was a one day thing that went from eight, 7 a.m. vendor setup to, uh, to 1 p.m. wrap up time. Here are some of my like flats as I call them. Here are a couple things. So I bought so many collections over the years. Somewhere, somewhere I probably have a half a tote full of all these old catalogs. I don't want to flip through the whole thing because somewhere in here, it actually shows the address of what uh, of the person that I bought them from. But again, a lot of these ones over on the left, they were actually in the commercials. I'm actually interested in them. It's cool to see like timestamp. Like it, it actually shows a year on all these and it shows how much they were selling for. Some of them show the print run. Um, Here's when, uh, it, it, it was cool to see too, uh, not that anyone, I mean, 40 minutes into a Utica Club Schultz and Dooley thing video on a Pokemon, like five people, let me know if you're still here, but uh, to go through and to look at like a price history, you can see which ones were failing to sell out and they started at a hundred bucks for the set and they went down to like 40 bucks to clear them out. Looking at the history, like here's one extra special price, twenty four seventy five. This probably originally retailed for eighty, and then they went yeah regular ninety nine. So they had to slash the price seventy five percent. I know years ago, several years ago, when I was selling it, I was getting over a hundred bucks for this. So 
kind of had to had to get rid of them. That they, they overprinted them, made too many, and then years later they they rebounded. And today I don't know what they're doing exactly, but yeah, it's, it's just cool to go through. Look at the different things they released over the year. One main PC item, it has a very similar uh, imagery on it, but it, it's like a rotating bar light that goes above, like like think above a bar, think above like a pool table in a bar, rotating bar light. It's like a big like ice pick type thing. And then there's a big block, and it's got Schultz and Dooley on the side. There are a couple, like, Grail PC items. I had one years ago. My house was too small, and I couldn't fit it anywhere. I couldn't hang it anywhere. So I ended up selling it. That thing was minty. I, I want to say I paid two fifty for it and got three fifty out of it. I, I would love to get one again. I would probably pay six or seven. I don't even know what they go for. But I would probably pay double what I sold mine for, for one that was as minty or more minty. Uh, just like Pokemon. I mean, they got into everything at one point or another. There's there's golf towels, there's hats, there, there's shirts, there's golf balls. There's, um, I've, I've actually got pocket knives. There's uh, so many things over the years. I've, I've got a calculator somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to flip through all these, but uh, and I don't want to accidentally dock somebody. I've got old, old. Uh, this is like from 1988. This is older than me. Just a big newspaper that, uh, that talks about the brewery's history and, and all different kinds of stuff. These are older than my parents. So, so this I, I picked up in one collection somewhere over the years. Syracuse Chiefs, uh, uh, so Utica Club, the brewery's in Utica. Syracuse is not too far. It's an official scorecard. I, I don't know if any of these guys ended up making the majors. This is like the minor league team. So I, I don't know if any of these guys down here like made the majors. Maybe maybe there could be interest. Probably not, though. I think I had 10 bucks a piece on these. A couple people looked at them, thought they were pretty cool. I've got 1963, 65, and 66. Pretty um pretty non PC advertisements in here. Uh, kill the umpire because he doesn't drink Utica Club. That that that's pretty rough. Not very PC, but it, it's just cool, interesting history. Things like this they don't take up that much space. Uh, for me, easy to justify. A bunch of old coasters. I I think I have nearly every coaster that they've made, and, and this all fits in a binder. Kind of get that that Pokemon card feel, right? Having a binder. Uh, Apparently I have some Jets ones in here too, but you um You look at all the different eras you look at all the different ages for a short bit They had like a very psychedelic theme going on and they had these metal ones I think there's like nine different metal ones. I don't know if I have them all in here, but you spin them They're, they're called like the Utica Club spinner uh, Spinner uh, coasters a couple of random bre breweries that I've been to I don't know where all my metal all my other metal ones are I know somewhere I know somewhere I have all the um all the metal ones, but I don't know where that is. I, I wasn't able to get everything together. I can't really show you much of my garage because it's just uh, it's a mess right now. But yeah, I, I wanted to do a little bit of a something to kind of uh, a, a goodbye to vending. A goodbye to vending Utica Club, Schultz, and Dooley stuff. It, it is not a goodbye to it altogether. Maybe I'm... I'm Pokemon, you, you've watched me go from, if you followed me back on E4 days, 2014, 2015, biggest collector boy, Dan, little bit of a flipper, I mean, I was buying big, I, I was always the same way in Steins, though. I guess I was never the truest of the true collector early on with Steins, I was buying big collections so that I could get the stuff I wanted for free, whereas with, with what I'm doing now, I'm the truest of true collectors, like, I can't say that I wouldn't ever buy a bigger collection if I had to to get something that I wanted that rotating bar light that I really want I can't say that I wouldn't ever but I am highly opposed I will do my best to not buy anything else that I need to resell uh, if I have to spend more money if I have to spend double to get something back that I sold years ago I I'm okay to do it the, the main things I want I want creepy dude with the pants instead of the UC so that I can have two creepy dudes staring at me and anyone hanging out in my man cave whenever I get that set up. And I want the rotating bar light. Those are my two big grail items. So yeah, that's uh, that's 40, going on, by the time I close it out, it'll be 45 minutes. Uh, let me know what you think below. Let me know if you want another. So I, I should have said it at the outset, but I'm gonna say it now. It used to be MetaZoo Saturdays. Now it's gonna be non-Pokemon Saturdays. I will do eventually a coin video, maybe a year from now. I might do another, as I said, years from now when my man cave is presentable, maybe I'll do a man cave tour. And in the man cave, absolutely, there will be a little bit of Pokemon. There will be a little bit of Jets, Rangers, Mets paraphernalia. There will be a little bit of everything. Just like in here, let me go back full. There's Pokemon, there's video games. 
There's Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. There's RuneScape. There's a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of Shelton Dooley. Uh, my my uh, my house. My, my wife gives me a, a few areas to decorate. The garage, my office, a couple places. Not too much. So uh, I get a little bit of everything. I, I've got my finance books above me. Personal finance, financial independence books above me. So yeah, that is my presentation on my final vending event for Steins. Uh, uh, a chapter has ended in the Catch 'Em All Collectibles history books, and not that new ones are beginning really. I, I guess a new one where I I'm just a collector. I'm just gonna pick up some PC items as I see fit. I do have a, a handful of things to sell here and there. That that one tote that I brought home, but as I said, those are full size signs. I think I need a couple more minis. I need to, I need to verify exactly what I need, and then I can put a list together. And then I can um, go to these conventions once or twice a year just with cash in hand, thousand bucks in hand, thousand bucks will buy you about anything you need. I think the blue pants guy that I need, last I knew he was six, seven hundred bucks. Maybe he's over a thousand now. Maybe I need to bring a couple grand just in case one of those comes. That, that rotating bar sign that I, um, the, the o over, over pool table leg light, 350 bucks I want to say I sold it for after buying it for 250. If, if that was if that was a thousand and it was pristine, and and it works still, might buy it. Who who knows? We'll see. Because things like that, I I doubt that uh, uh, airplane hangers got full of it anywhere. I I doubt that thousands or tens of thousands or millions were made. Or I, I think a lot of those things were were on the order of hundreds, and a lot of them over the years just got trashed. A lot of them got destroyed. But but yeah. I need a sip so I can do my do my closing. I appreciate everyone watching. Let me know if you made it to the very end. I'm gonna look at the analytics on this one. Not too often do I look at analytics, but uh, I'm gonna see how many people made it to the end of a 47 minute sign video. Uh, blows my mind. Blows my mind if anyone does it, but I imagine at least a couple of people will. And I, I I appreciate everyone who watches, but I extra appreciate the ones who stick till the end. So yeah, I. Uh, I appreciate you all watching and I will catch you all later.